Hello everybody, uh, uh, my name's Stone. Welcome to, a uh, Hugh. <laughs> Dearest Hugh. Oh, I've had the most dreadful luck. I feel terrible that you've been left alone all this time. The traitorous Dr. Grey tried to steal the annular spectrum. A ring I developed to allow perception and alteration of color. Some call them impossible colors. <laughs> impossible for Dr. Grey, maybe. Anyway, something went wrong. I turned a strange shade and became invisible. The ring, it, it fractured, scattering colored shards far and wide. I stayed at home for many weeks, watching, waiting, existing on this colored plane. I couldn't speak to you, nor interact with anything in the mono world. So I left. I left for the university where I hid away the colored tools I had created. I pray you have found what is left of the ring. There's, um, there's a lot of that kind of dialogue in this, this little indie game. So, um, I did play this game a little while ago. Uh, so I kind of know, I already know what the game, I already beat this game, so... supposed to do. That's wonderful. Um, I'll figure it out though. Uh, I might have to go this way. Don't care. Right. Now we have blue. Now, if you're playing this game on your own, um, that shape won't be there unless you have colorblind mode on. I'm gonna let her talk. Since the beginning, we have pointed to the sky and declared it blue. It is this shared vision, this unquestioned understanding which connects us. But are you really seeing blue the same way I see it? No. Perhaps blue is nothing more than a shade of grey to you. Perhaps everyone in this world sees nothing but shades of grey. Don't you see, Hugh? This. The rocks, This is they, why we're here. They just disappeared. I don't know how you did it. Who cares? I'm saved. Thank you. Uh, anyways. I'm not colorblind, by the way. I just, um... I don't know, it's kind of... I just, I just like it. I kind of like it a little more. When you There's... enter a cave expecting a waterfall, the chances are your expectations will be met. But if you discard those expectations, don't you think instead the cave will be full of surprises? I ask for you, Hugh, to abandon your expectations, to pull me back from the brink of unreality. I need you to see the world not for what it is, but for what it can be. For some reason, if you were to take out his eyes, he kind of looks like a Priyana plant from Mario. Oh, hello there. You startled me. I'm just resting my legs. Don't play too close to the water now. Trust me, I won't. This game isn't too terribly long. It's one of those games that kind of drags on, though. So. Oh. Shit. <laughs> it's this way. Uh, okay. 
there's um there's a secret up there, but I can't get that. I don't know if I'll get it in this because I already have the trophy. I got all the trophies. Fuck. <laughs> My bad. I realized how to do that immediately after I jumped. Don't run into it because it will still kill you. It's retarded. is at the very end of the visible spectrum. It's the hardest color for our eyes to distinguish. Now, imagine a shade one step further than purple, a color beyond what we can actually perceive. We call these impossible colors. And I fear that this, this is where I currently reside. If reality is rooted in our perception and you cannot perceive me, do I even exist to you? I'm sure that I do. I mean, you're reading this letter, or or at least I hope you are. I'm sorry, but existing in this strange state of impermanence does funny things to you, Hugh. It makes you question what is real. By the way, if you guys couldn't tell, this is a puzzle game. No, it's crazy, right? I really do like the concept of this game where you have to use colors to figure out puzzles. Thank you. 
Come on, guy. Hurry up. Alright, the second, uh, third color we have, we get fucking orange or yellow. I think it's orange. Pretty sure that's orange. Yeah, that's orange. I prefer a darker orange so it's easier to distinguish. Right. The university gardens were bathed in an earthy orange light when I first met Dr. Gray. Summer had come and gone and a cold autumnal crispness had caught me off guard. I sat on the grass surrounded by my books and papers when a cool breeze threatened to blow my notes across the lawn. A page escaped my reach and took flight. A man not much older than myself chased after it, catching it on his third or, or fourth attempt. I remember his gentle smile when he returned it. <coughs> he started talking and I was surprised that he had read my work in the university journal. He said he was a professor and that he hoped we could work together someday. It's funny, Hugh, how something so small can change so much. I think this is a good place to uh to end the episode so um i uh thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and uh i will see you all in the, in the next one uh bye